In this video, we'll show you how to draw a flowchart to describe a business process. In it, we'll follow the business process modeling notation, BPMN, a standard modeling notation adopted worldwide, so that there's a common understanding on the symbols and notation used in a diagram. To begin with, we'll define the companies involved, followed by specifying people who participate in it. Next, we'll go into how to mark a beginning of a process. Then, we'll talk a little bit about defining things to be done. To finish off, we'll cover how to define decisions. In the demo part, we'll be using Business Process Visual Architect, the model edition from Visual Paradigm, and we'll show you how to draw the business process diagram example below it describes a fire safety inspection process in a fire and safety services company. A business process often involves communications between different companies or departments. In our example, the fire and safety services company may issue an inspection report to its client when available. So it's important that we define organizations first. In BPMN, we use a pool to represent an organization. So in a business process diagram, the fire and safety services company will become a long bar that looks like this with a name on the left. And similarly, the client will look like this. Let's go to the software now and draw these pools. We are now in business process visual architect. Let's start off by renaming the diagram. To do that, right click on any white space in the diagram and select rename. In the box, Type in Fire Safety Inspection Flowchart. And then press Enter. To add a pool, go to the Diagram Toolbar on the left. Under the Business Process section, look for Horizontal Pool and then just drag it to the diagram. In the box here, we enter the company's name, Fire and Safety Services Company, and then press Enter. And then to add another pool for the client, just do the same. Go back to the toolbar and drag horizontal pool out to the diagram then enter client press enter then we're done with defining the organizations for our example for our flowchart there are three participants in the company they are the supervisor inspector and inspection assistant in BPMN we use a lane in a pool to represent a participant in a company so in a business process diagram, supervisor would become a long bar that looks something like this. And similarly, with inspector and inspection assistant. To represent that these participants are from the company, these three lanes are within this company pool. We will now draw the three lanes in the fire safety company pool. Let's go to the diagram toolbar on the left. Under the Business Process section, look for a lane and then drag it to the pool and then name it Supervisor. Press Enter and that's our first lane within the company pool and let's add the second one. Go back to the toolbar and drag lane into the pool again. And this time we name this inspector. Press enter and let's make this a little narrower. Okay, and now let's add the last lane. And we'll name this inspection assistant. And then press enter. And resize it a little bit. And we can drag the client pool up here. So off in the screen. 
and then we're done. One of the special things about BPM Man is that it provides a way to explicitly mark the beginning of a process when general flowchart does not. There are various types to suit different needs. Here are some of the start event types. A general start event to specify a beginning without any triggers. A message start event that takes a message to trigger the start of the process. And a time start event that kicks off a process by a time, a date, or a recurring time or date. In our example, let's just say that we do not require any triggers to kick off the start of the process and that the process begins with the supervisor. To represent that, we will add a general start event to the supervisor link here. Go to the diagram toolbar on the left. Under the business process section, look for start event. By default, you see the general start event here, but you can also click on the down arrow on the right and select other type. For example, you see message start event or time start event that we saw earlier in the slide. But since our example only needs a general start event, so we'll just drag it and put it in the lane here. And if you wish, you can label it here, but uh, we're just going to keep it uh, simple for now. So we're just going to leave it blank. In step 4, we define things that need to be done or what we call tasks in a business process. In BPMN, we use a rounded rectangle to represent a task. In our example, our process may begin with the supervisors prioritizing the outstanding cases and assigning them to various inspectors. So in a business process diagram, the supervisor's task would look something like this. Next, the inspector will conduct inspection on site based on the assignments and the inspector's task would look something like this in the diagram. Because BPMN uses a rounded rectangle to represent a task as a standard, readers can quickly see which ones are tasks in the diagram. Whereas with general flowchart, lacking a standard symbol, some people might use a square when others might use a triangle to represent a task. Let's see how we draw them in the software. To draw tasks, actually Business Process Visual Architect offers a unique shortcut using what we call the resource icons, which you'll see in a bit. First, place your mouse over the start event. You see some tiny icons surrounding it. Drag the task with the rounded rectangle in it. And then release your mouse button. And we're going to name this task Assign Cases. And then press Enter. And let's resize a little bit. And then after this task, um, we're going to add the one for the inspector. So what we do is select it, and then drag the task icon again, and drag it to the inspector lane, and then name it Conduct Inspection, and then press Enter. Let's resize a little bit. Now after this task, we're going to add the third one. And again, drag the task icon and move it to the inspection assistant lane. And then name this one file inspection report. Press enter. And let's resize a little bit. And move it to the right. Here we go. Okay. And then after that, select the task again and we'll continue with the foe. And this time we'll add it to the inspector lane. And enter submit inspection report. 
press enter. Okay. Move it a little bit to here. Okay. Now we're ready to add the task uh, for the supervisor again. So select this task and drag the task icon to the supervisor lane and then name this one review inspection report and then press enter and let's resize it here now we're done with adding the tasks now apart from speed, another good thing with the resource icons is that the system checks the BPM and rules against the selected shape and shows you the valid icons only. So if you place your mouse over the start event, you see one, two, three, four icons here. Whereas if you select another task, you see a completely different set of um, icons available for you. Since the text in the tasks are pretty brief, it would be helpful to add more info to it. Let's say we want to do that for our assigned cases here. To document the goal of the task, go to the documentation pane. So first select the task and then go to the lower left corner here. This is the documentation pane and we're going to enter some description here. And then if you want to add specific steps of the task, we need to go to the procedure editor. Usually, it will show up below the diagram over here. If it's not showing, which is the case right now, um, just right click on any white space of the diagram and then select show procedure editor. And then we see it here. So again, we need to select assigned cases and then after that you will see a blank row in the editor and then just click on it and perhaps uh, we'll add the first step and then uh, let's another, add another step and then let's just say that we're finished with uh, adding the specific steps in step 5 we draw decisions for example after the supervisor reviews the report he or she will decide whether to approve it or not. If approved, maybe the next step is to send report. If not, the case may return to the outstanding pile to queue up again. In BPMN, a diamond shape called gateway is used to represent a decision. So our decision tree here will become something like this, as shown inside the red rectangle. Let's see how to draw a decision in the software. To add our decision point, select Review Inspection Report task here and then drag the gateway icon to the right and we're going to name it Approve with a question mark at the end. And we do that because we want to show that it's a decision in which a question is posed. And then now press enter to confirm and we're going to continue drawing the yes path for approved reports so select the gateway drag the task icon to the right and here we're going to type in send report and then press enter And after this point, let's just say that um, this is the end of the process. So um, let's select this task and then drag the generic resource icon to the right. And then select an event, an event to mark the end. Okay, now let's go back to the connector here and double click on it and I'm going to type in yes and then press enter to indicate that if the report gets approved here, 
it'll get sent after this point. Okay, let's say the reports didn't get approved. We're gonna add another path for that. So select the gateway, drag the task icon, and drop it on the assign cases task. And then let's just move it up here. And we're going to double click on the line and type in no and then press enter. Okay, and this is to indicate that if the report didn't get approved, it will go back to the outstanding pile for further processing. After you completed the diagram, Let's say that you were asked to add another task for the inspection assistant before he or she files the report. That will be somewhere around here. Now what we need to do is uh, we can insert a shape here by first uh, making some room here first. So to do that, go to the diagram toolbar, go to the tool section and select sweeper and go back to the diagram and we're gonna click somewhere along this line here okay now um, place your mouse over the connector here and you will see a little cube here that says split with shape now just click on it and select task and let's name this Compile data for this task. Okay, and and then you're done. But then, uh, since we have some extra space here, um, the diagram doesn't look very nice. So let's remove them, and let's go back to the toolbar. This time select magnet and just click somewhere along here and then just drag to the left so it kind of pulls back all the elements from the right towards left and perhaps a little more. And let's do a little bit here as well. So that way you can see the end event here again. And then you're done. From your business process diagram, you can also generate a report in various format. To do that, go to the toolbar at the top go to the dock and then click the down arrow and as you can see there are various formats that you can generate your report in and for now we're gonna try the word report click on that and in the dialog box opened this is where you would specify the location to save the report and the file name that it will be saved in and right over here you select the business process diagram and then after that we we'll just click generate here and then there um, we have a word report and let's scroll over it briefly okay as you can see this is the flowchart that we drew earlier and there are other additional information and here in the summary section you see different uh, model elements but since we didn't put in any documentation earlier, so um, these columns are blank. And if we scroll down a little bit further, you see the assigned cases task, and you see the documentation that we put in in the example. So even if you frequently update your flowchart, it doesn't take long to generate a report as often as you like to keep it up to date.